Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte B75M HD3. This is a micro ATX form factor motherboard. It's actually slightly smaller than a standard micro, micro ATX motherboard, so it should be at home if you're building a smaller footprint system, for example. Uh, features Gigabyte's ultra durable four uh, construction, so humidity, electrostatic, power failure, and high temperature protection integrated. Also a glass fabric PCB design, again, for humidity protection. Uh, this is part of an HD series, so they uh, actually have high definition digital outputs, and uh, you can make use of those, assuming you purchase an Intel Core processor that has an integrated GPU, and most of them do. This is compatible with Intel's second generation Sandy Bridge, as well as third generation Ivy Bridge Core processors. Again, the majority of those do have uh, integrated GPUs, however, some do not, so uh, make sure you double check. Uh, you also have the B75 chipset that's going to be controlling quite a few different things on this motherboard, but I'll get into that as I proceed. Dual UEFI BIOS, so you have a bit of peace of mind if you're doing a BIOS update, or you can use the secondary one to set uh, different BIOS settings and be able to switch back and forth between the two. Windows 8 ready, and uh, by way of the UEFI BIOS and Windows 8's uh, pretty awesome boot times, you can actually get, well, pretty awesome boot times by combining the two of those. Of course, also compatible with um, most other operating systems that you might install on this. Uh, ultra durable construction, I already pointed that out. LGA 1155, in case I didn't mention that, that kind of goes hand in hand with the Intel second or third gen uh, processors, or core processors, I should say. But uh, proceeding here to the back, uh, we do also have support for Intel's small business advantage, which is something that I'm not particularly familiar with, but based on the gigabyte uh, indications here on the back of the box, uh, you get stuff like a software monitor, data backup and restore functions, uh, USB blocker to, unblock, to block uh, unwanted USB device classes, also productivity features such as a PC health center that you can be run off hours even if the computer's off, energy saver, and Intel wireless display or WiDi technology. Bear in mind you will need an add-on Intel or WiDi uh, compatible Wi-Fi card uh, as Wi-Fi is not included with this particular motherboard by default, but you do get that uh, as an option to add on if you want. Uh, you also have some additional information over here on the right. Uh, again, that's more about the UD4 construction, uh, all the different protections, so you guys can check those out if you're interested. Some more information a bit further down here. All solid ca caps using the construction. We do have PCI Express Gen 3 support. Bear in mind that's only if you go with a third generation Ivy Bridge core processor, uh, PCI Express Gen 2 will be your default if you're installing a second generation Sandy Bridge processor. You get some on-off USB charging ports, which means that even while the computer is off, you can still use those ports to charge devices such as smartphones or tablets. USB 3.0, SATA Revision 3, DirectX 11 support again, um, assuming you get a processor with an integrated GPU. And then uh, lastly, we have some more detailed specs there in the lower left. Uh, you guys can take a closer look at those. I'm going to go ahead and check out the accessories. So first off, we have some documentation. Of course, uh, we have your main user's manual. We also have a multilingual installation guidebook. So if English is not your first language, this is the European version that's included right here. So European languages. I presume. Uh, we also have a utility and driver disk right here. Uh, you should head over to the Gigabyte website to download the latest utilities and drivers that they have available. However, this can be handy, especially if you need to load the driver for your uh, network interface card or the integrated uh, LAN port on this motherboard because obviously you might not be able to connect to the internet without that. Uh, you also have, of course, the full in, in, uh, user's manual, I should say, so you can lay out of the board there. We also have, ooh, a block diagram. I always like the block diagram, so you can tell what's connected to what. For instance, what connects directly to the CPU, what's controlled by the Intel B75 chipset, as you can see down there at the bottom. We also have a full detailed specs on all of the uh, various hardware that's integrated onto the motherboard, so uh, you can check that out if you want as well. We also have uh, some installation instructions. Uh, you can also check out our new Egg TV How to Build a Computer video if you'd like some more uh, detailed instructions on assembling your computer, especially if you're a first timer. It's really not that hard, I promise. Uh, we also have an input-output shield right here. This is metal. It's got some imprints on it here, so you can tell what's HDMI and what's USB. There's a look at the back of it. We also have two serial ATA cables that are included. These are all going to be SATA revision 1, 2, or 3 compatible. One of them is going to have two straight plugs on both ends. Uh, one of them is going to have a straight plug on one end and a 90 degree angled plug on the other end. And these also include, include the little metal clasps to help hold them in place. 
So as you can see, we have a micro ATX form factor right here. And again, uh, just not as wide as most typical micro ATX motherboards. That does give you a little bit of extra space in your case if you're going to be going with a smaller form factor system. Uh, measurements on the board is just about nine and three quarters inches tall and just shy of seven inches wide. Uh, if you're more into metric system, that measurement is 240 millimeter, I'm sorry, 244 millimeters top to bottom, 174 millimeters wide. Uh, next up, of course, we have the color scheme of the board, which is a blue PCB in the back. We have some lighter blue uh, components and connectors, such as the serial ATA ports and the DDR3 DIMM slots. Uh, we also have some white scattered throughout as well, and some gray accents. And uh, looking here at the back, you can get a better look at the PCB and the color there, uh, as well as, of course, the back plate for your LGA 1155 socket. And then um, we do have a heat sink down here, which is held on with some plastic prongs. Back here on the front of the board, uh, I did want to point out fan headers before you get in too close, and uh, they're right here. You have one CPU fan header and one system fan header right next to each other. Both of them are 4-pin PWM capable, and uh, that pretty much does it for that. Taking a look at the board in detail, we're on the lower right-hand side, and um, usually you'd see front panel connectors here. At least that's what I'm typically used to seeing. Those are actually higher up on the board. So what we're looking at right now is three of the included five serial ATA revision 2.0 ports. So right there, serial ATA connectors. So you can use those to connect hard drives. Uh, SSDs, although uh, if you are going to plug in an SSD, you should go with the SATA Rev 3 port. Uh, and then, of course, optical drives. Um, three of these down here, a couple more uh, up further. I'll, we'll get to those in just a moment. You do have a USB 3.0 front panel header right there. So that's a 20-pin header. Uh, that is controlled directly by the B75 chipset. So that should give you really, really nice performance. Uh, USB 1, I'm sorry, USB 2.0 port, uh, connectors right here. Two of those, and each of those will be able to give you two USB 2.0 ports, so four total. Uh, you also have a parallel connector right here, which you don't see too frequently these days. These are typically used for printers, if you guys are familiar with the kind of uh, big fat D-sub connector that was kind of a purplish pink color. Uh, the, that was the old school parallel printer connector. Uh, you can use a ribbon cable to connect this here. So in particular, in uh, business cases, there are some very, very expensive printers that might be a little bit old, but still work just fine, but need a printer uh, parallel connector. So there you are set up with that right there. You also have a comm header right here, front panel audio as well. So you can route that over to connect front panel microphone and headphone. Above that, you have some more of the audio components on the board. Uh, including, of course, your Realtek uh, audio codec chip right there, and that's uh, going to support Realtek. I'm sorry, that is a Realtek ALC887 codec chip, supports up to 7.1 channel audio. Uh, bear in mind that if you are going to go with 7.1, you'll need to use a combination of the front panel audio connector right there, as well as the analog ports on the back I.O. Uh, moving over here, we have our PCI Express uh, area. Of course, we have a full length 16x PCI Express slot. So if you're going to be installing a discrete graphics card, that's going to be your number one option right there. A couple uh, PCI Express X1 slots right below that. Then finally, we have a uh, PCI slot. So if you have an older PCI device, you should still be able to connect it right there, plug it in, and get that up and running. We have a gray heat sink right here, and that's over the B75 chipset to keep that cooled down. Uh, I have mentioned that this board does have dual BIOS. There are the two BIOS chips right there. You can access those from the BIOS. Uh, and then moving up the side of the board, uh, I already showed one, two, three of these light blue serial ATA Rev 2 ports. We have two more here and here. And then finally, you have a single white serial ATA Revision 3 port. That's six gigabits per second. And definitely, if you're going to be going with uh, a really high-end hard drive uh, or if you're going to be going with a SSD in particular, make sure you connect it to that SATA Rev 3 port to get the maximum amount of bandwidth available. Moving up the side of the board, we have a 24-pin main motherboard power connector right here. That is where you will plug in the main motherboard power connector from your power supply. Above that is our front panel connectors. Oops, sorry, I bumped it. Uh, so you have a little chart right here, and that's going to kind of give you a better idea of what's going to plug in where. For instance, your hard drive and act activity lights, power and reset switches. Um, you also have a clear CMOS, uh, a couple pins right there, so you can use a jumper to short the two of those to reset the uh, UEFI to factory defaults. Next to our front panel connectors, we have these two long blue slots, and these are DIMM slots for DDR3 memory. Uh, this does support dual channel, so I would recommend that you buy a matched pair of DDR3 DIMMs. Uh, this does support up to 16 gigabytes, so you can have up to 8 gigs per DIMM. 
uh, and it does support some overclock speeds of, uh, well, it supports memory speeds 1066, 1033, 1600. Uh, bear in mind for 1600 official support, you will need an Intel Ivy Bridge or 22 nanometer processor uh, as opposed to the Sandy Bridge, which is also compatible. Uh, of course, mentioning that, we're moving right along and segueing into our socket. Here's our 1155 socket for the CPU, compatible with second generation Sandy Bridge or third generation Ivy Bridge core processors. Uh, you also have, of course, some power delivery components which are scattered around here, such as some of these uh, caps, chokes, and MOSFETs that you can see right there, uh, providing power. And then, of course, we have the supplemental CPU power connector up there, just a four pin needed for this one, so make sure you connect that so your CPU is going to run properly and your system will boot up as it should. Finally, we have some uh, rear panel inputs and outputs right here. So taking a closer look, we have uh, four more USB 2.0 ports right here. So two here and two here. And I should mention that all the USB, the 3.0 as well as the 2.0, all controlled by that uh, B75 chipset. So um, it's just nicer to have that native uh, control versus an add-on chip. Um, also, of course, you have some video out connectors right here. And bear in mind again, most Intel Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processors do have an iGPU. There are a few SKUs that don't, so make sure that if you want to use integrated graphics, you get the one that has the integrated graphics. Pretty much, pretty simple from there. Uh, we have a couple digital display outs, so HDMI as well as DVI. Also, you got a VGA analog for an analog RGB signal, uh, and the DVI and the HDMI can uh, support resolutions up to 1920 by 1200. Here are your other two USB 3.0 ports. You also have a gigabit Ethernet connector right there, uh, so it's supported by a Realtek chip. And finally, I have, you have your analog audio connectors right here. Pink one there is a microphone in jack. You also have a couple analog uh, outputs. And again, remember, if you do want 7.1 channel support, you're going to be using a combination of these, as well as your front panel audio connector right there, and you can configure that in the BIOS. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte B75M HD3 motherboard featuring the B75 chipset, as well as the 1155 socket for second or third generation Intel Core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.